I'm ready. Welcome to the May 8th or May 6th meeting of the Plan and Zoning Commission. I will read the meeting uh, rules and procedures. The Plan and Zoning Commission is generally an advisory body to the City Council. The City Council will hold a public hearing and make the final decision on all matters before the Commission other than site plans and subdivision plats, unless denials or conditional approvals thereof are appealed. Please contact the city clerk or development services department staff at 515-689-9485 for details on council hearings. Applicants will be given 10 minutes to present the request. If applicants wish to share materials not already submitted with the application, please email them to planning at dmgov.org so a staff host may be able to share them on the screen when you present. Proponents and then opponents from the public are then allowed to speak in that order, with each speaker allowed a maximum of five minutes. Staff has attempted to compile a list of people who would like to speak on each item. Staff will first call on these people and then will open it up to anyone else who wishes to speak. To request to speak during the hearing, please use the raise hand function on Zoom webinar via the internet or dial star nine on your phone. Once permission to speak is given, to unmute and mute, dial star six on your phone. You will be required to give your name and address for the record prior to speaking. Also, we ask that you keep your microphones and phones on mute unless you've been given the chance to address the commission by the chair. Applicant is then allowed five minutes for a rebuttal if any opponent spoke. All comments are to be germane to the item under consideration and speakers are to maintain a courteous manner. The hearing will then be closed and the commission will discuss and vote on the issue. Items listed on the consent portion of the agenda will not be individually discussed and will be considered for approval in accordance with the recommendation in the staff report unless an individual present or a member of the commission requests that the item be removed from the consent agenda and considered separately under the public hearing agenda. The city of Des Moines is pleased to provide accommodations to individuals or groups with disabilities and encourages participation in city government. Please know that typical accommodations may be limited by emergency requirements as issued by the state of Iowa and the city of Des Moines. And Tyler's going to take roll call. All right, uh, Abby Chungath. Here. Rocky Spazato. Here. Will Page. Here. Johnny Alcivar. Here. Dory Bryles. Here. Jan Freed. Jan. Yes, here. Thank, thank you. Kayla Berkson. Here. Lisa Howard. Here. Steve Wallace. Here. Carolyn Jennison. Here. Francis Bogus. Here. And Greg Jones. Here. We do have 12 members present. Emily and Gray Watier will not be with us tonight. Okay, thank you. Uh, we... Uh, is there a motion to approve the minutes from the April 15th meeting? Dory, this is Carolyn. I'm going to approve, move to approve. Thank you, Carolyn. Greg Jones? Yes. Abby Chungus? Yes. Francis Bogus? Yes. Carolyn Jennison? Yes. Steve Wallace? Yes. Lisa Howard? Yes. Kayla Bergson? Yes. Jan Freed? Yes, I can't get my thing on. Oh, <laughs> yes. Thank you. Thank you. Dory Browse? I'll abstain. I was absent. Okay. Johnny Alcivar? Yes. Will Page? Yes. And Rocky Spazato? Abstain. 
Thank you. That motion carries 10 0 2. Thank you, Tyler. So before we start the items that are listed on consent, there is another item that we can possibly move to consent this evening. That's item number 11. It's a request from University Avenue Storage LLC for property located at 1960 Claypool Street. And it's to revise the future land use classification from business park to industrial. Is there anyone here who wishes to uh, hear that item? Use the raise hand function or press star nine if you're calling from a telephone. And I'm not, there... not seeing each chair. Okay. Is there we anyone? Do have... on? Well, hold on. Um, we do have a gentleman that's raised his hand. Um, let me just confirm that he's here to talk on item 11. Okay, thank you. Jim, um, go ahead and unmute yourself and just let us know if you were here to speak in opposition to item 11. No, I'm here uh, representing the applicant. Okay. So we're recommending approval with no conditions. So we thought it could move to uh, consent since there wasn't any opposition. Is that, are you okay with that? I'm fine with that. Okay. All right, thank you. Uh, are there any uh, members of the commission that would like to hear that item this evening? If not, is there a motion to move item number 11 to the consent agenda? I'll move that, Dory Jan. Thank you. All right, uh, Johnny Asselbar. Yes. Dory Bryles? Yes. Jan Freed? Yes. Kayla Berkson? Yes. Lisa Howard? Yes. Steve Wallace? Yes. Carolyn Jennison? Yes. Francis Bogus? Yes. Craig Jones? Yes. Abby Chungath? Yes. Rocky Spazzato? Yes. And Will Page? Yes. Motion carries 12-0. Okay, hey, thank you. I will read through the other items that are on the consent agenda. Item number one is a request from TK Development LLC for review and approval of a third amendment to the preliminary plat Southwoods Estates on property in the vicinity of 5730 Rose Avenue to provide for a final plat three that would have 19 development lots. Is there anyone in the public who would like to pull this item from the consent agenda and have it heard this evening. Please use the raise hand function or star nine on your phone if you'd like to speak on this item in opposition. We don't. I'm not, uh, I'm not seeing any. Sorry, I cut you. You were doing the same thing. Sorry, Dory. Okay, thank you. And uh, are there any members of the commission that would like to hear this item? If not, that item will remain on consent. Item number two is a request from Jerry's Homes, Inc. for review and approval of the preliminary plat Pearl Lake in the vicinity of the 3100 block of East Peyton Avenue for development of 391 household residential lots. Do we have any members of the public that want this item pulled and heard this evening? You probably need to, yeah, there's one raising their hand, Roger Hall. Roger, if um, this is Jason with staff, could you unmute yourself and just confirm you're here to um, it, you're here to speak on item? Roger. You remuted yourself, Roger. I thought I think you had it unmuted for a second. There you go. Uh, Roger Hall, three thousand nine East Peyton Avenue. Um, 
we have do you want to, I just want to confirm that you wanted item two discussed, um, the full presentation. If you had questions and concerns? Yes, please. Okay, no, no worries. Just wanted to confirm. Thank you. Okay, we will move item number two from consent. Item number three is city initiated request for the vacation of the following segments of street and alley right of way in the vicinity of Southeast Astor Street and Shaw Street and the vicinity of Southeast 16th Street and Vale Street to assemble land for the Municipal Services Center phase two project. Is there anyone from the public who wishes to have this item removed from consent to be discussed this evening? Chair, I see a hand raised, uh, Dell Jones. Um, I believe he maybe owns land in the area. Uh, I'll, Dale, go ahead and just confirm you're here to speak in opposition to item three. Dale, it looked like you lowered your hand. Did you want to speak on this item? Do you have the ability to unmute yourself? There you go, Dale. Yes. Hi, my name's Dale Jones. I live at 3,700 kids. That's okay. You don't have to. Enter. I just wanted to confirm that you were here. You would like this item removed from the consent agenda. Well, I don't want to. I want to see if I can get it continuously on this to communicate with some city officials of what they're doing on this property. Okay. Um, I guess I'm, it's unclear. Do you want the item discussed on whether or not the right of way is needed for a public purpose, or are you interested in land purchase? Well, I'm interested in land purchase. Okay. It's Can we have? Um, that's not really what the commission is. They're just determining whether or not the land, the this, these undeveloped right of ways are needed for street right of way or alleys anymore. Um, they're not here to decide what who buys what. Do you, we can we can discuss the item. I just wanted to make sure you understood what the commission's purview was. Oh, okay, I guess I do. Would you like the item discussed then? Yes. Okay, thank you, Dale. Okay, so we'll move item number two to the public agenda. Item number four is a request from Merle Hay Anchors LLC for property located at 4,000 Merle Hay Road to allow new construction of a 55,000 square foot commercial center type building. Is there anyone from the public who wishes to have this item pulled from consent and discussed this evening? Please use the raise hand function or star nine on your phone if you'd like this item to be discussed. I don't see any chair. Okay, thank you. Any commissioners? Okay, then we will uh, leave item number four on consent. And item number five is a request from Jeffrey Hayes and Susan Crowley for review and approval of a public hearing site plan for a type two design alternative for property located at 1049 38th Street. Is there anyone from the public who wishes to have this item pulled from consent and discussed? Not seen any. Okay, uh, anyone on the commission wish to have it pulled from consent? Okay, if not, number five will remain on consent. Item number six is a request from CLI Properties, LLC, for review and approval of a public hearing site plan, Community Lawyers of Iowa, for a type two design alternative for property at 601 and 607 Hickman Road to allow for parking lot improvements. Is there anyone from the public who wishes to have this item pulled from consent and discussed this evening? If not, are there any commissioners who would like to have this item heard this evening? 
We'll have item number six remain on consent agenda. Item number seven is a request from Switchman Investments for review and approval of a public hearing site plan, secret admirer bar for type two design alternatives and denied type one design alternatives for property at 110 Southeast 5th Street to allow reuse of the property for a bar with outside seating area. Is there anyone uh, from the public that would like to have this item heard this evening and removed from the consent agenda? Are there any commissioners who would like to have this item heard? Okay, item number seven will remain on the consent. Item number eight is a request from Mercy One Medical Center, Des Moines, for review and approval of a PUD final development plan, Mercy One Richard Deming Cancer Center on property located at 411 Laurel Street to allow a new drop-off drive and canopy. Are, is there anyone from the public that would like to hear item eight this evening? Is there anyone uh, on the commission? If not, we will have item number eight remain. So um, on the consent agenda for this evening, we have item number one, item number four, item five, six, seven, eight, and 11. Is there a motion to approve the consent agenda? I'll move it, Dory. This is Jan. Thank you, Jan. All right. Uh, Abby Chungith? Yes. Rocky Spazato? Yes. Will Page? Yes. Johnny Alcivar? Yes. Dory Bryles? Yes. Jan Freed? Yes. Kayla Berkson? Yes. Lisa Howard? Yes. Steve Wallace? Yes. Carolyn Jennison? Yes. Francis Bogus? Yes. And Greg Jones? Yes. My motion carries 12 0. Okay, thank you. We're now ready for the uh, public hearing portion of the evening. Uh, we'll start with item number two, uh, which is a request from Jerry's Homes, Inc. for review and approval of a preliminary plat Pearl Lake in the vicinity of the 3100 block of East Peyton Avenue for development of 391 household residential lots. And I believe Eric is handling this item. Yes, uh, Madam Chair, Eric Lundy, Senior City Planner. Uh, Jerry's Homes is following up with a preliminary plat uh, based on the recently approved um, PUD conceptual plan amendment uh, the commission saw earlier this year. Um, the property is the property in gold shown there. Um, the center portion, which is the regional basin, is actually property owned by the city, but they're looking to plat land on, on the either side of the um, basin. Uh, this is looking at the property uh, to the south from Peyton at the eastern end panning a little bit towards the west, southwest, and further southwest. Um, this is the property on the Army Post side looking southwest to northeast, a little further to the east, and then uh, more directly north This is a general layout of the plat. There's two streets that would come in and terminate uh, at east and west property lines. They would be providing required turnarounds for fire. Um, 17 lots up in this area. And uh, 
another 22 lots here for a total of, I'm sorry, not, not 22 here, uh, 19 here, and then three more here for a total of 39. Um, these are larger lots with the, the one that does have kind of the flag access point. I can zoom in. My understanding is their phasing would probably develop this area last, but they are showing how it would be served with public utilities. Um, this is rotated on its side a little bit, but this is the, the northern portion that would come off of Peyton from the left. And then the eastern portion. The utility plan, again, um, Everything's for the most part through the street system, but then um, hooks on to laterals in the area for sanitary sewer and water. They would be ensuring that extension would be made for property owners to the east and west to, to uh, pick up from their utilities. This shows grading. And then this is the, the tree mitigation areas on the property. Um, and then they're showing the street tree plantings that would mitigate uh, canopy areas that would be removed. Uh, staff is recommending approval of the preliminary plat subject to the uh, two conditions that you see there on the um, staff recommendation, compliance with all comments of the administrative review. Um, we did want an additional comment that they would um, future street trees be provided on the East Army Post Road area for the three lots on the south end. Uh, they would they would be installed at those at the time those lots are final platted and developed. And if you want to go back to that to see what so they what they submitted didn't show any street trees in this area, uh, but we want them to amend the plat to show those trees, even though that's a later phase in their development plan. And uh, when they get, they wouldn't be installed until these lots were final platted and developed. We did not get um, comment cards from the adjoining property. We didn't send comment cards, but we didn't get any written communication uh, regarding this from anybody within the 250 foot notification. Any questions from the commission? If not, then we could um, move on to the hearing. Okay, is the applicant uh, present to speak? Uh, please state your name and address and you have 10 minutes. Melissa Hills is, uh, raised her hand. Or James Cowan, I'm sorry. James, you can unmute yourself if star six or uh, Unmute. There you go. Yeah, this is James Cowan with Jerry's Homes, uh, 3900 West Town Parkway, West Des Moines. Um, we have no comments and, and we will be uh, addressing 
staff's comments accordingly. And so we have, have no issues. So um, at this time, are there any other speakers who wish to speak in support of this item? Do we see any uh, hands raised, staff? If I'm not, not seeing any. I'm not seeing any chair. Okay. Uh, if not, then are there any speakers who wish to speak in opposition to this request? And I believe it was was it Roger Hall. Yeah, Roger, go ahead and unmute yourself. Yes, this is Roger. I have I brought up in the last um, hearing. Under the general notes, number two, the existing resident shown on partial T shall remain. The driveway and utility service shall be reconstructed to tie into proposed public improvements. And I think that since we had brought it up last meeting or the last uh, hearing on this item, uh, we haven't had any feedback from this one note. Eric, yeah, okay, here you go. He's referencing the conceptual plan document. Um, so I'm trying to see. Uh, the amendment, I know that uh, this was brought up by the owner at the um, conceptual plan stage, but the plat wouldn't necessarily have that. I guess I would ask if the developer is is um, addressing that with the with their uh, project. It's not something that's um, necessarily enforceable at this point, but um, I see that, Eric, did you say that Melissa Hills is also associated with the application? I see that she's raised her hand. Yeah, she's the engineer. Um, she can speak to it if she, if she wants to, um, okay. if she's ready. She can unmute. Melissa, if you had an answer for us, uh, go ahead and unmute yourself. You have to press star six if you're on your phone. She, or, she's lowered her hand. Oh, okay. Maybe James wants to wait till the rebuttal. Um, that, that makes sense. So going back to the plat document so that every, the property that's in question is this property here. <clears throat> And so I'm not, I guess I'm not sure uh, if they believe they're not getting the access to the utilities that they are um, wanting at this point. It looks like there's an easement here. I'm trying to find the utility plan here that would connect. Um, I'm going to try to rotate it here so it might be easier to see as well.
So there, there's a sanitary easement and connection provided for on the plat here. to that property. So I guess I'm, I'm interested in what Roger's expecting. If it's, if it's the improvements that he negotiated with the developer, um, that may not be enforceable with our, with our um, plat here. They're showing it in the plat that it's provided for um, in terms of the service connection to the home or something that that's probably a private negotiation at this point. Um, maybe the applicant can speak to that as well. And, and perhaps Roger can uh, expand on what his expectation is. So uh, Roger, do you have any other comments or questions? before we turn it over for the applicant's rebuttal? No, I, I just, I'm just going from the note that reads, the way I read it is that it, it says that we will be connected to city services whenever this was drawn up in the Second Amendment. Do, uh, could the applicant, I believe it's uh, James. James, would you like to um, speak now? You have five minutes for closing statements. Go ahead, James, you're unmuted. Okay, um, I, I guess there needs to be an explanation as to uh, the difference between the conceptual PUD and the actual approved PUD, because the language is different from what we've discovered from the original, which was created when, I don't know, it was 2000, I don't know, 2003 maybe. Um, but since then, there's been changes made in the, uh, the current approved PUD uh, shows us providing the sanitary sewer to the property. And I believe um, providing a 15 foot stub into the property so the, the property owner can connect to it uh, without uh, doing any work off of their property. So, Madam Chair, this is Eric Lundy. The, the conceptual plan, the original one was enforceable uh, as it was approved, but then this, the more recent amendment is the, is the superseding document. Um, they're both considered the conceptual plan. One's the uh, amendment to the conceptual plan. There was an amendment. The previous, it actually wasn't the original um, amendment that was dealing with this property. There was an amendment that allowed this par parcel to be carved out and, and remain with the existing house. And so I think the language that Mr. Hall is referencing was based on that allowance mm -hmm. for that house to be kept out of the original approved PUD. And part of that was to make sure it was served by public uh, access to sanitary sewer that was gonna be included with this development. Uh, I don't believe there was any assurance that that would connect the home, but providing it to the property so so the home could be connected, would, would the, that would be the normal action. Um, I can try to research that a little closer with the approved document. Um, if, if that's necessary. I guess this the staff wasn't really prepared with this question because no, after notices were sent out, nobody made contact with city staff ahead of this hearing. So this is the first. But I also just would piggyback on what Eric said that, you know, it, it's typical that the, 
developer extends infrastructure to the end of their development. And in this case, that's that property line. Um, so it, it would be atypical to have a developer actually hook all the house completely up to the 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 service and provide you know take on the liability of connecting to their actual house and severing their septic and those sorts of things. That'd be unusual. And so that really, uh, this is a story that really wouldn't be germane to our action then this evening either. Is that correct? That's correct too. This is a, a platting exercise and the plat's in conformance with the PUD conceptual plan. And um, we've reviewed it administratively and you can see that we have just a couple minor comments, but uh, we, we believe it meets code and the intent of the PUD. Okay, so I think uh, we could close the public hearing at this time and uh, ask uh, time for the commissioners to discuss. Dory, this is Greg Jones, I'll move staff. Thank you, Greg. Is there any further discussion? If not, we'll go ahead and take the vote. Sorry, missing my uh, paper here. <laughs> Okay, um, Lisa Howard. Yes. Steve Wallace. Yes. Carolyn Jennison. Yes. Francis Boggess. Yes. Greg Jones. Yes. Abby Chungus. Yes. Rocky Spazzato. Yes. Will Page. Yes. Johnny Alcivar. Yes. Dory Bryles? Yes. Jan Freed? Yes. And Kayla Bergson? Yes. That motion carries 12-0. Thank you. Item number two has been approved. We'll move on to item number three, city initiated request for the vacation of segments of streets and alley right of way in the vicinity of Southeast Astra Street and Shaw Street and the vicinity of Southeast 16th Street and Vale Street to assemble land for the Municipal Services Center Phase Two project. And there are members of the commission, Jason Van Essen with the city's planning staff. Um, let me flip to the map here. I think that will do a better job of, here we go, uh, illustrating, the, showing you the right of way that's being discussed. Um, you can see to the north up here is the original phase or phase one of the Municipal Service Center. Uh, this area over here has um, a site plan that's been approved, and this is an auxiliary to it for a phase two of the Municipal Service Center, um, getting more of our uh, facilities, uh, parks, public works, getting it all in one house. Um, uh, the commission actually saw a site plan for the building in this general area, and then some parking here and some activity around this part of it. Uh, in, I think it was about a year ago. Um, and this is just the continuation of that project. You can see the land around the orange, the subject right away, that's controlled by the city as far as uh, anybody that would utilize the land for access. It's generally undeveloped or a dirt path level of quality. And so the commission's role in the vacation of right away is to make a recommendation of the city council on whether or not something is needed for a public purpose anymore from a public access standpoint. Um, and that's um, what your role is. It's, it's not to, you don't, we don't get involved in who gets what, that's, that happens at the council level. Just another <clears throat> graphic outlining the right of way. Staff report, you know, when we get these vacation requests, you know, most of the time our focus is on access and impacts to uh, traffic. And so in the staff report there, that's what we focused on. Uh, this, and we don't believe the area is needed for circulation. It's not used currently. 
and that, um, as I mentioned, the only properties that are dependent upon it for access as their only access are controlled by the city. This was the notice map. Happy to answer any questions. If there are no questions at this time, is there anyone else who wishes to speak in support of this item? If not, we did have, uh, I think it was Dale Jones who uh, wanted to speak. Was it in opposition or? Dale, go ahead and unmute yourself and give us your name and address for the record. Hello? Hello, Dale. Can you give us your name and address for the record, please? Push on this. You just got a lot of money. You can't hear me. So click on it. You're, you're so, unmuted. We can hear you. Say, I, can't hear you I can't hear you. And I could be four. How about now, Dale? Can you hear us now? We can hear you, Dale. <laughs> Dale? Do you have any luck? Just telling you that way. If he needs to talk through there and then still be on there. I don't know you're going to call me on your cell phone. Just so you know. I'm going to call you on my cell phone. Dale, can you hear us? I, I don't know that he can hear us, but he's made some comment about calling us on his cell phone. I was going to give him a second to see if an extra phone number pops up, if the commission's okay, okay. with that. Okay. Sorry, no, technology. No. <laughs> In the meantime, was there anybody else who wanted to speak on this? Yeah, if there's anybody else in the audience that wanted to speak on this item, please use the raise hand function or star nine on your cell phone. I can hear you. So, I think an extra phone number popped up, but I didn't catch which one it was. Does anybody? Dale, um, Dale, use the star nine on your phone and I'll let us know which phone number is yours. All right, here we go. Dale, now you'll need to use star six on your phone to unmute yourself and then you should be able to speak. Are you there, Dale? Okay. You hear me now? Yes, uh, excellent. Uh, just give us, for the record, give us your name and address, please. Uh, Dale Jones, 3700 Kinsey, Des Moines, Iowa. And Dale, could you tell us your concerns uh, about this item? I have properties at 609 Southeast 15th Court. 613 Southeast 15th Court, 627 Southeast 15th Court, and the salvage operation at 1520 Murray Street. <clears throat> if the city vacates this alley, I have no way to maintain my fences or the weeds that are growing along the sides of it. I have no clue how close this pond's going to come to my properties. Um, I, I don't know if I can request this thing to be continued to a different date. So me and my attorney can communicate with city officials and try to see if there's a way that I can do this without having to request every time I want to mow my grass or clean along my fence or fix parts of my fence um, to make things a little bit easier on me too and still be able to keep a clean and 
good good place to see, you know. So, Jason, are you able to speak to his questions? You know, I think there's a couple options before the commission. Um, you know, if the commission would like to be you know, involved and see how it plays out, you certainly could continue the request and we could come back um, and report back to you. Um, you could also approve it. And if you felt like that was a record, excuse me, move forward with making a, your recommendation to the city council. And as part of that, you could, uh, if you were concerned by what's been shared that that needs to be addressed, you could make that part of your recommendation. Um, it could be as simple as just uh, a, a recommended condition that the, you know, the applicant work with the neighbor to provide, um, ensure that he has adequate access for maintenance of his fence. It could be something along those lines. Uh, if, if the commission was in, inclined to leave it in staff's hands, you could just move forward with the staff recommendation and we could forward the concern to the, um, you know, the real estate division engineering. Uh, and they're the ones that negotiate land tran transactions. Okay, thank you, Jason, for giving those options. Sure. Uh, well, I think can we I, could go. Can I speak one more time? Uh, yes, go ahead. Are you there? Yes. You know, my, my understanding with this is anytime I want to go over there and do work to my property along my fence or something, I have to have an insurance policy to be on city property. Um, you know, I just, I don't understand that, you know, the city not at least maybe trying to uh, work something out, at least giving me half of that alley to help maintain my property that, you know, it's it's not been used in over 30 years now as it is. Um, you know, I've tried to keep it looking good all my years I've been here. So I, I, I'd like to see something happen in that effect where I don't have to have an insurance policy just to cover me to go over there and work on city property. Thank you, Dale. Um, I think we'll go ahead and close the public hearing now and commissioners um, time for you to discuss and uh, share your thoughts. Uh, Madam Chair, this is Will Page. I have a question of, uh, of Jason. Jason, is there time value in terms of this, uh, this vacation? You know, I am, I'm not certain how the timing fits into um, any sort of other city processes. Eric, do you recall when this came in for in setting the agenda? Did you have any discussions with engineering on timeliness? Eric. I'm trying to unmute. It's not. That's all right. Yeah. I tried like three times. Sorry. Um, there, I don't believe that the timing's any different than the phase two uh, project. I, I think it's fairly soon. I mean, they've been through the, like the pre-development process. So I believe it's, you know, as, it's as soon as possible. Okay. Um, uh, well, that's that's helpful, Eric. I think keeping yeah. that in mind, that in mind, Will, I would suggest that it it would be good for it to move forward. But if the commission wanted staff to address, make sure that we addressed his um, Dale's concerns, I would just put something in your motion. Yeah, they could probably allow you know allow for a maintenance easement or something. Right. Uh, I would uh, prefer, quite frankly, to give Mr. Jones the chance to work with the city on this so he feels comfortable about it. He's been a long landowner here for a long, long time. Uh, as a property owner myself, I would have some concern, actually, about uh, working on, on, on city property. So uh, I would move to continue the item. There's a motion to continue. Is there any other comments? I think we're going to need a, a date, correct? Yes. 
Yeah. yeah. That means the next meeting. Yes. Okay, there's a motion to continue this item to the next meeting. Um, could we have a vote? All right, uh, Will Page. Yes. Johnny Elsevar. Yes. Dory Bryles. Yes. Jan Freed. Yes. Kayla Berkson. Yes. Lisa Howard. Yes. Steve Wallace. Yes. Carolyn Jennison. Yes. Francis Bogus. Yes. Greg Jones. No. Abby Chungus. Yes. And Rocky Sposato. Yes. So motion to continue to the May 20th meeting carries 11 1. Okay, thank you. Okay, now we will go to item number nine, which is a request from Hubble Realty Company for review and approval of a 10th amendment to the River Woods Legacy PUD conceptual plan for property in the vicinity of River Woods Road and River Ridge Avenue. Yes. Madam Chair, members of the commission, Bert Drost, planning staff for the city of Des Moines. The request would allow for the 10th amendment to the River Woods PUD the Riverwoods PUD is located on the city's southeast side uh, to the east of Southeast 22nd Street and just to the south of Hartford Avenue. Um, if you're familiar with the city's trail system, there's an existing trail uh, that runs along here called the Carl Voss Trail. And early on in this pr process, there was some misinformation that got out that people believed that the trail was going to be closed when in actuality, uh, this um, proposed development would only temporarily disrupt a trail spur that's located right here. Um, the amendment that's being considered tonight would essentially allow for development of 22 lots within this area um, right here. So um, when I show you their plans, you'll see that the trail spine itself is remaining um, completely intact. So the um, first I'll show you the PUD conceptual plan that's on the books right now. Uh, this dates back to, I believe 2003 was the last time there was a major um, amendment to it. And as you can see, there's this approved plan shows a north-south connection through the eastern portion of the property. Well, since this time, the um, developer Hubble has um, dedicated most of this land in this area to the city. So it's unlikely that this road would ever punch through. And then with this uh, proposed uh, plat, which would be the final build out of this PUD, they're proposing two cul-de-sacs here. So because these cul-de-sacs in this area would preclude this northern north-south connection from ever getting built, um, they were required to go through the PUD, pro PUD amendment process to revise this plan. And this plan that's on the books also has um, some a series of elevations that's allowed. So right now, these are the conceptual architectural elevations that are allowed within the Riverwoods PUD. So since Hubble was going through the process of amending the PUD, they also took the opportunity to introduce um, about eight new house types. So uh, again, here's the PUD conceptual plan that's proposed at this time. The amendment would really just impact this area here. It would be a total of 22 new lots. Um, this sketch here really provides the best and the most clear picture of what would occur. So you can see there's two cul-de-sacs here with a total of the 22 lots. You can see the Carl Voss Trail here would remain intact. And the trail spur, um, right now it goes from the Carl Voss Trail to the end or the terminus of River Ridge Road. So um, this construction would essentially shorten the um, trail spur. And when I get to the staff recommendation, you'll see that there are a series of conditions that 
um, I worked with the parks department uh, to come up with to draft uh, to ensure that the impacts to this trail spur are as minimal as possible. So as I mentioned, Hubble was using this opportunity to introduce uh, eight new um, housing types into this uh, conceptual plan. And in actuality, these are the houses that they're currently building in the um, phases that are under construction right now. So this is more or less just um, memorializing what is getting built there. As well. so now I'll show you some photos of the uh, area. So this is looking down the end of River Ridge Road at that trail spur. So you can see this is the section that would essentially be removed during construction and then it would stub into the end of the cul-de-sac, the east end. This is the other cul -de or the other stub right now that would be extended to have a cul-de-sac bulb. It's just further back. And again, this is looking down the River Ridge Road at the trail. You can see there's already a wide trail on the north or wider than average sidewalk on the north side. And there's a condition that would require this the sidewalk on the north side of the street to be wide. So essentially there would still be a trail connection from this point to the Carl Voss Trail. And then, as I mentioned, um, the houses that are on the conceptual plan being proposed at this time are really the houses that are getting built today. So I thought this was a good example that shows several of the recently constructed houses and how they're more in line with the elevations on this 10th Amendment than on what was on the plan from back in 2003. So um, I'll just go through our staff recommendation quickly. Uh, we did recommend a series of conditions related to the trail system. So the first condition is just compliance with the tree removal and mitigation ordinance. And um, then conditions, I believe two through 11, really deal with the trail. Uh, it's just to ensure that we get the adequate uh, easements for it and that it's designed so it so that the development's designed so its stormwater basin doesn't cause any erosion concerns. Um, and there's a condition in there that um, deals with what's required when that trail spur is temporarily closed. And then uh, number 12 is the condition dealing with uh, the building elevations. Um, these are just the basic conditions that we've applied to most PUDs, just one that the how that uh, the same house shall not be built on adjoining lots. Any house shall have a minimum two car attached garage. The any house should then generally match the character elevations in the PUD. A D that they have to have architectural type shingles or cedar shakes, just no standard three tab shingles. Uh, e, any house has to have at least 1,200 square feet of area, and F, a condition on the building materials. So this is the letter that the developer sent out to the neighbors for their neighborhood outreach. Uh, and then they submitted their summary of the emails and concerns that they had heard from the neighbors. And again, a lot of the concerns dealt with people worried about the trail closing. And here's an email I got, we got from the Riverwoods Neighborhood Association. Um, you can read it, but the gist is they expressed some concerns, but they didn't take a formal position on the project. And then here's the consent map. Uh, you'll see, I believe we had like 37 cards come back. So I'm going to have to scroll through these pretty quickly. Um, but um, I guess now would be a good time to ask any questions you have of me while I slowly scroll through these cards and letters. Were there any questions for me? Oh, 
What was the total number of cards received, Jason? Um, 37. That's okay. 37. Okay. And, okay. and then we had the email from the Neighborhood Association. Then at the end, I have another three or four emails from concerned neighbors. Okay, thank you. And like on this card here, their main concern was 50 foot wide lots. Uh, the PUD uh, does only allow for 60 foot wide lots or wider. So that wouldn't be a concern. And we did send these cards. There were several hundred that went out. So it, I guess it's not real shocking that we received 37. And Jace, uh, uh, Bert, of the 37, how many were in favor and how many were in opposition? I didn't do the math, okay. but I, I, I've only, it was probably 10 in support, 27 in opposition. Okay. getting there. <laughs> mm. And like I said, I had a few emails as well. As Bert finishes scrolling, this is Jason um, Van Ness and his staff. I, I think just a couple observations, like Bert noted, there was concern about <clears throat> the um, the impact to the trail, but also too, I think there's, you know, it's it's um, customary or a, a fairly normal that in a neighborhood that develops slowly over time that. Uh, those that maybe haven't seen the full plan don't understand that some areas that look undeveloped now have have had rights already granted for development. You know, in this case, um, you know, I think you saw several cards in there where folks were would rather it stay as it is today. But the reality is, is the PUD conceptual plan as it is today, you know, contemplated a road coming through those trees and more of those trees being eliminated to facilitate lots. So I, I think a lot, although it's um, maybe not in a position to leave it as it is today, I think a lot has been done to preserve um, woodlands um, in this particular development. Mm -hmm. I guess that concludes my presentation. Thank you, Bert. Uh, is the applicant uh, ready to present, please state your name and address. All right, Eric Bonenkamp, uh, you should have the floor. Hi, this is Eric Bonenkamp with Hubble Realty Company, uh, 6900 West Town Parkway, West Des Moines. Um, I'm not really here to present anything tonight. I'm here to answer uh, any questions that staff or any residents may have. Uh, I would just like it noted um, that yes, this is a PUD amendment, but the reason for going through this is to amend that that master plan to a, amend the, the design and the road layouts. Um, we did do, we did work with staff a number of years ago to donate you know a large chunk of this wooded area within Riverwoods um, to the city. Um, it was at no cost to the city. Uh, so this would just be the final phase of this development. So we are, sensitive to uh, the neighborhood and the uh, concerns with deforestation. Um, we just like it noted that we have done what we can in this area and we have donated significant ground to the city for, um, for, their, uh, for their use. And, and you were in agreement with all the staff uh, recommendations? Yes, we worked with staff and we are in agreement with the staff recommendations and the conditions.
Okay. Uh, are there any other uh, speakers to speak in support of this request? I'm not seeing any. Okay. Are there anyone present who would like to speak in opposition to this request? If so, state your name and address and you uh, will have five minutes. Not seeing any, Madam Chair. Use the uh, raise hand function or star nine on your phone if you would like to speak on this item. I'm still not seeing you. Okay. Then uh, do we have any other questions for staff at this time? So we'll go ahead and close the public hearing and uh, commissioners, what's your pleasure? It's Francis Vargas. I make a motion we move staff and adopt that in support of staff recommendations. Thank you, Francis. Any other further discussion on the motion? If not, uh, we'll call for the vote. All right, Steve Wallace. Yes. Thank you. <clears throat> Excuse me. Carolyn Jennison. Yes. Francis Bogus. Yes. Craig Jones. Yes. Abby Chungith? Yes. Rocky Spazzato? Yes. Will Page? Yes. Johnny Alcivar? Yes. Dory Bryles? Yes. Jan Freed? Yes. Caleb Berkson? Yes. And Lisa Howard? Yes. That motion carries 12-0. Thank you, Tyler. Okay, uh, we have two items remaining, item number 10 and 12. Item number 12 is a request from Menard Inc. for the following regarding property located at 6000 Southeast 14th Street, 5907, 5911, and 5917 Southeast 8th Street and 801 Hart Avenue. All right, Madam Chair, members of the commission, Bird Ross planning staff for the city of Des Moines. Uh, if this item looks familiar, it's because it was before you uh, later in 2020, at which time Menards rezoned these four parcels at the rear of their property. Uh, they rezoned them and their entire site uh, to the CX-V, which the CX is the um, shopping center commercial district, and then the dash V just means that vehicle display lots are prohibited. Everything along uh, the Southeast 14th corridor has that dash V um, designation. But anyway, like I said, at the time last fall, Menards was looking to expand a larger area where they would require the demolition of four houses here. So they had actually purchased all four of these houses, but now they're um, further along in their planning process and they realize they only need to demolish two of the houses. So in order to have residential uses be reestablished on these two areas, they uh, need to rezone them back from CXV to the N3A district. And then since they were going through this rezoning process, they also wanted to take this opportunity to see if the commission would be willing to waive um, one or two of the zoning conditions that were applied to the entire site last year. So the rezoning of those two lots um, back to the N3A district required the land use plan to be amended from the a commercial designation to a low density residential district. So again, it's uh, these two lots and the, this northern one matches the existing boundaries. The southern one would be a new, they would replat this lot to shift the property lines. Um, and this is the rezoning ordinance that was applied back, I believe, um, in October, and it contained a series of conditions, the first of which tied them to the large scale development plan that was presented to the Plan and Zoning Commission. 
So at a minimum, this condition needs to be, re, um, I guess, revised so that they're no longer held to the large scale development plan that was proposed last year. So I'll be showing you the revised um, plan here shortly. Uh, and number, condition number seven was also, prob I'm sorry, condition number five that is was also problematic for them. Uh, staff had recommended that any commercial use of the property shall be in conformance with an approved site plan that demonstrates that the entire site is in conformance with current landscape standards. At the time, Menards didn't really understand the, um, I guess, the significance of that condition, so they didn't oppose it. But um, they later realized that the current standards require like a landscape island every eight parking spaces. So currently, they only have landscape islands at the ends of the road. So bringing the whole site into compliance with the current standards would be uh, um, like a significant investment for them. And I'll let Menards address any other conditions that they um, have concerns with. So this is the large scale development plan that was approved by the commission last year. It showed the existing setbacks for the existing stores, but then it also showed where these four houses would be removed and um, how they would expand into this area here. So this is plan here is what they're currently proposing. Um, I'll zoom in on that Southwest corner so the commission can see what they're proposing. And as I mentioned, Menards did purchase all four of these houses. So they currently own these two houses. I, my understanding is that they'd be looking to sell these after they get the site redeveloped. So staff does realize, yes, this expansion is going to reduce the property values or the values of these properties. But um, right now, since Menards is the property owner, it's they're really hurting themselves. So um, when they go to sell them, they'll probably get less than they could have otherwise received just because there's the large 14 foot tall wall behind the properties. So here are some photos. This is along Southeast 8th Street. These again are the four houses that would be removed. And then here's our staff recommendation. We did recommend approval. Um, we felt that it's reasonable to allow them to rezone those two houses back to an N3A district so that they can be reoccupied. Uh, and then as far as the conditions go, um, we the only condition that we're supporting being revised at this time is that first one. Uh, we're saying that the development shall be carried out in accordance with the large scale development plan presented to the commission on May 6, 2021. So that would no longer tie them to the previous large scale development plan. Then the rest of the conditions would, the staff's recommending would remain the same that was applied back in um, last fall. So I believe the main discussion tonight will probably center on condition number five to deal with landscaping. So here's the consent map. We only got one card back and it was in support. We didn't have a comment. Um, so that concludes my presentation. Does anybody have any questions for me? Well, if not, thank you very much, Bert. Thank you. Uh, is the applicant uh, here to present uh, this evening? Please state your name and address and you have 10 minutes. Nick Brenner, you should have the floor. Good evening, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes. Awesome. Uh, Nick Brenner, uh, real estate representative with Menards 5101 Menard Drive, Eau Claire, Wisconsin. Um, don't have much to add. I think, um, you know, with all the changes in the, the development that we've done on the site since we've last been in front of you, um, we have had the determination that we can save two houses, uh, which I think is a, is a great thing um, for the neighborhood and for the area. Um, we are planning at this point to own them and rent them out. Um, so we will be putting in 
some investment into the houses to fix them up. Both of them need a little bit of a facelift. Um, so we're looking at uh, investing some money in that and fixing them up and giving um, some people hopefully a nice place to to live. Um, the the one area that we were asking for some leniency on uh, since the last time around, as Mr. Um, Drost stated, was the, the parking lot landscaping islands. Uh, we don't have an issue complying with most of the landscape requirements today. Uh, we have, you know, agreed and have no issues meeting the increased landscaping that we have done to the north and to the west to buffer the residential. Um, that has always been something that we've been willing to do. Uh, with the amount of perimeter landscaping that we do have, um, it is our hope that we can avoid having to uh, rip up the parking lot to put more landscape islands in. Uh, this is a major expansion already. Um, we are planning to keep the store open during this expansion, um, which is, as you can imagine, quite difficult from an operational perspective, just based on how much we're doing on the south side and in the, in the lumber yard. Um, we're hoping that we don't have to touch the other parts of the property that aren't being impacted, which includes um, probably 95% of the parking lot. Um, the other issue that we have too, when we add islands in like this is, you know, when we put islands in with a new store, a new parking lot, we put irrigation in them. But how do you run irrigation? We'd have to rip up even more of the parking lot. Um, and the inconvenience that our, our the guests would have it here, and, and obviously there is an investment component to it as well. Um, you know, it just seems to be overburdened when, um, you know, we have some parking lot islands already. And, um, you know, we'll be happy to provide the perimeter landscaping that has been requested. Uh, but we are just asking for some leniency on the parking lot aspect of this um, just because of everything else we've done from a landscape perspective around the site. Well, thank you, Nick. Is there anyone uh, else who wishes to speak in support of this request? If not, is there anyone who wishes to speak in opposition to the request? Or have concerns? I'm not seeing any. If you're fr calling from your phone, you can press star nine to be recognized. Uh, if we have no uh, further members of the public who wish to speak, uh, we'll close the public hearing. And commissioners, it's time for you to discuss. Anyone on the commission wish to make a motion or comment? Dory, this is Will Page. I just have a question. The, the text says eight evergreen trees and four overstory trees. The graphic, the design, the plan shows islands. Uh, in the parking lot, how can that be rhymed if it- Well, yeah. Go ahead, please. I can address that. So when the property did, when Menards did their expansion to the north about 10 years ago, that was a condition of that rezoning that required the eight evergreens and four overstory trees per 100 feet along that north property line. And so I had just listed this within the condition to make sure that that previously imposed condition carried forward. So um, if you're, I don't know if you were on the commission when Menards did their expansion here, they um, bought out the Wyckoff heating and cooling that was here and um, then expanded to the north. And at that time in order to 
limit impacts on these houses to the north. The commission required those um, eight evergreens and four overstory trees here to provide that buffer. Did that answer your question, Will? Uh, yeah, but talk a bit about the islands that are shown on the on the current. Sure. Plan. So you can barely see them on the aerial photo. I think their large scale development plan does a better job at representing what's there. So, so you can see in their parking lot, they have the islands at the ends of the rows. But, and they have some cart corrals in the middle, but they don't have any other landscape islands in the middle. So our current landscape standards as of the 2019 update requires one landscape island every eight spaces. Under the old code, we required one space every 20. And uh, this is Jason, I just wanna jump in a little bit there. And um, Bert, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think the way the condition is written, it still allows the applicant to go through an administrative process where we could look at, you know, if there's any um, practical difficulties in, in complying. You know, it, we, we recognize that you can't always do eight in a row perfectly. Um, so there would be that process available during the site plan process. The, the importance of the zoning condition really is to make sure we can have that discussion about the parking lot. It, it doesn't mean that you have to flat out meet that every eight uh, for sure. It's just uh, gets us talking. Well, with that clarification, I would move then staff recommendation. Any other discussion on the motion? Not, we'll go ahead and take a vote. All right, Lisa Howard. Yes. Caleb Berkson. Yes. Jan Freed. Yes. Dory Bryles. Yes. Johnny Alcivar. Yes. Will Page. Yes. Rocky Esposado. No. Abby Chungith. Yes. Greg Jones? Yes. Francis Bogus? Yes. Carolyn Jennison? Yes. And Steve Wallace? Yes. That motion would carry 11 1. Thank you, Tyler. We're ready uh, now for the final item of the evening, item number 12, which is request yeah. a request from Wesley Retirement Services, Inc for review and approval of a PUD final development plan, Wesley Acre site improvement plan on property located at 3520 Grand Avenue. Yes, Madam Chair, members of the commission, before I start on this item, I see Morgan Bullen is in the attendees list. She would have been the applicant for number 11. So I just wanted to let her know that number 11 was approved uh, as a consent item in accordance with the staff recommendation at the start of the meeting tonight. So Morgan might have joined after the commission took that action. Okay. Thank you, Bert. Sure. All right, so number 12 is the Wesley Acres um, site plan. If you remember back in January, the commission held a public hearing on the Wesley Acres PUD conceptual plan amendment. Uh, at which time the commission put several conditions on that. So the public hearing tonight is really just on the site plan and reviewing the site plan against that conceptual plan to make sure that all of the conditions imposed have been addressed. So here is the existing uh, Wesley Acres PUD uh, boundaries, again, on the south side of Grand Avenue, just to the east of 37th Street. Uh, this is the consent plan, um, so the concept plan that was approved um, by the Plan and Zoning Commission in January and then ultimately City Council in March. Again, it allowed for uh, the construction of some new parking and some landscape terrace to the north. 
of the facility along Grand Avenue, and it allowed for some uh, building additions in this area right here. Initially, they were wanting to expand this parking lot along the north side of the Bolton building uh, further to the west and then provide a driveway to 37th Street, but that portion of the property or project was scrapped. Again, um, this just shows the footprints of the proposed building additions. And the gray areas are really showing where um, concrete would be disturbed and added. And these are the elevations that were approved. Ultimately, um, they had to make some changes to the milk materials, and then they had to lower the height of the uh, pool addition in order to reduce impacts on those properties to the west. And the elevations that they've submitted uh, for the site plan match these perfectly. So here's the site plan. Um, I believe it's about 25 or six pages, so I won't go through all of those. I'll just hit the highlights. Um, so number 17 is, a, or page 17, it's a good example. Again, north is to your left. So it shows the darker areas show what would be disturbed. So you can see these new additions here on the west side of the building, a new entryway addition further to the north, and then another small addition here. The next couple pages are really zoomed in on those areas. So now north is to the top. So this is the front lawn along Grand Avenue. They would have a landscape terrace and a water feature here along Grand Avenue. And then they would also <clears throat> reconfigure the driveway to provide a turnaround in this area here. And then this is a zoomed in um, view of the modifications proposed or that would be on the west side of the site. Again, the pool and the auditorium addition are in this area. Then they would be um, realigning the parking and driveway through this area here. In a little bit, I'll show you the <clears throat> um, landscaping plan that's been proposed in order to buffer these two houses to the west. Another area of concern was the stormwater basins, a basin at the south end of the site. They are proposing to make modifications to that, and they are meeting the conditions that were imposed with regards to the maintenance and uh, just providing certification that they function as designed. And one of the conditions that uh, was imposed is that they have to submit an annual report to the city that uh, just proves that the um, stormwater basins are functioning as designed. Right, and as I mentioned, the elevations that were proposed with the site plan match perfectly what was approved on the conceptual plan. And then here is a colored version of the portion of the property that abuts these two houses to the west. Um, I had asked them to submit this just to prove or to demonstrate like how dense their landscaping screen would be along this area. So um, for analysis purposes, it's 385 feet from, I guess, or I'm sorry, let me check. I think it was 285. Yeah, they have 285 lineal feet of property line and they're proposing eight overstory trees and 31 evergreen trees in this area. And that's in addition to the existing trees. So uh, when all said and done, it's about 50% more vegetation than what would be required within a heavy buffer, which is our most dense buffer that the code requires. So staff does believe that it's an appropriate mix of species um, that will ensure that there is adequate buffer um, for these two houses here of, um, from both the parking and from these um, 32 foot tall uh, building additions. 
So here are um, a few pictures. Uh, I took some photos of that west site boundary because I, I know that's the area most of concern to the neighbors. And this is looking at that corner. So they would be adding quite a few trees in this area amongst these existing trees. And this is looking back at the building where the um, additions would go. Another photo. And now I'm turned back to the west property line. So in this area here, they would be adding some evergreen trees to enhance that buffer. So in the staff recommendation, I just listed the eight or nine conditions that were imposed by the city council approval on March 8th. And again, um, this um, PUD development site plan does satisfy all of these conditions. And um, one of the notes um, number six was any new parking area shall be landscaped with the buffer being reviewed and approved by the plan and zoning commission during the development site plan review. This requires site and rear buffer plantings to lessen the impact on the properties. And really that gets to um, that slide I showed you in color that shows really what they are, that they are going above and beyond what would otherwise be required for the buffer planting. So um, when all said and done, they met all of the requirements. So staff has a pretty clean uh, recommendation. We just recommended approval subject to compliance with all administrative review comments. And since this was a site plan, we mailed out public notices, but we don't include comment cards with those notices um, because since it's a site plan without the neighbors actually physically looking at the site plan, it's not necessarily fair to get their input. We require people to look at the site plan and then we would give them a comment card to fill out. We didn't get any um, comment cards back. I did mail the site plan to a few of the neighbors and to the neighborhood association for their review, but I didn't, um, I didn't receive any feedback. Did anybody have any questions for me? Thank you, Bert. That was a good presentation. Thank you. Uh, is, is the applicant present to uh, speak this evening? Please state your name and address. Yeah. Uh, yeah ma'am. Nope, sorry. Go ahead, Bert. Oh, go ahead. I was going to say you have the floor. Thank you. Um, yeah, Madam Chair, this is uh, Darren Schlopp with Wesley Life. Um, 5508 Northwest 88th Street, Johnston, Iowa. I don't have a lot more to add beyond what Bert presented. Um, I think it was um, pretty clear that uh, you know we've done uh, a lot of work to make sure that we not only meet but exceed a lot of the recommendations and requests. Um, of everyone that's been involved in the early stages of this project. Um, I have had um, some conversations since our city council approval with uh, Kevin McPhee, who's one of the uh, adjacent property owners talking through our landscape plan, which was the color plan that you guys uh, had an opportunity to look at and that Bert presented um, and a uh, good dialogue on that really talking about timing of when these plantings might happen and so on, but uh, um, no significant uh, changes to that other than the placement of maybe a tree or two, which I was able to um, assure him that when we get to that point, we will definitely do that collaboratively with him. Um, uh, Scott Carlson is the other property owner here. And while we've connected via email, my uh, rather uh, challenging schedule has not allowed us to get together. So um, I do plan on doing that and making sure that uh, I go through the same um, exercise with him and make sure that we're 
meeting or exceeding his expectations with these plantings and the placements of those when we get to that point. As for the rest of the plan, um, uh, I don't think I have anything else to present beyond what Bert did, but happy to answer questions um, that anyone might have on the commission or otherwise. Thank you very much. Uh, if we have no questions at this time, are there any others who wish to speak in support of the request? If you are on, excuse me, if you're on your phone, you can press star nine to be recognized. And uh, if not, are there any uh, members of the public who wish to speak in opposition to this request? Again, if you're on your phone, you can press star nine to be recognized. So if there are no other uh, members of the public, I um, guess we can close the public hearing at this point uh, and ask commissioners if you have any thoughts. Dory, this is Jan, and I just wanted to make a comment. This has been a very controversial uh, project in the neighborhood, and I just wanted to say that I think it's wonderful that there was some collaboration and some uh, accommodation and paying attention to uh, neighbors' concerns. So I just wanted to make that comment. Thank you, Jan. Does anyone uh, wish to make a motion at this time? Dory, Rocky, I'll move staff. Thank you, Rocky. Is there any further discussion on the motion? If not, we can take a vote. All right, Dory, Browse? Yes. Jan Freed? Yes. Kayla Berkson? Yes. Lisa Howard? Yes. Steve Wallace? Yes. Carolyn Jennison? Yes. Francis Boggess? Yes. Greg Jones? Yes. Abby Chunga? Yes. Rocky Spazzato? Yes. Will Page? Yes. Johnny Alcivar? Yes. That motion carries 12 0. Thank you, Tyler. Um, I'd just like to remind commissioners that our next meeting. Uh, on May 20th, uh, we'll, we'll have a 5.30 p.m. session uh, on ch uh, text changes to chapters 134 and 135. And I'd also this afternoon, uh, late afternoon, you should have received an email announcing that Eric uh, will be leaving uh, working with the Planning and Zoning Commission. And uh, he will, effective June 1st, start as the city zoning enforcement officer. And I just wanted to uh, personally, thank Eric for all his years of work, 22 years of work with uh, Plan and Zoning Commission and development in this community. So thank you, Eric. Thank you. It's been a pleasure to work with the commission all these all these years. And, and certainly as a zoning officer, I'm sure there will be opportunities to be involved with the commission. Great. Thank you so much. And thanks. Uh, all you commissioners and have a great rest of your evening. Uh, Dory, and if I may. Dory, may I yep. ask a question, please? Uh, sure. And, and first of all, you know, we all received an email oh, a couple of three weeks ago from yeah. um, Aaron Olson Douglas, who has talked about other promotions in the city as well, including in addition to Eric, uh, Bert and Jason and, and Mike as well. And so I think we all want to congratulate them for their, their new responsibilities and their promotions. And kind of along that line, my question is this, um, since the this department is now, I think called development services and there are different people involved that we'll be working with, it would be very helpful, at least it would be for me, if we had a new organizational chart 
that gave us, you know, the names of people and the positions that they're filling right now. So if that's possible with the city to do, or if it's already done, I'd request that, that some kind of information along that line be sent out to commissioners. Well, I think this is Jason. I think that's a great idea. And um, it, we have a chart that's kind of put together. I don't, um, I'll see if it's updated and we'll get that out to the commission. And, um, you know, I think all of us that have kind of moved around in different positions and have worked with all, all of you for these years are really excited about the new opportunities, new challenges ahead. And I know from, um, I'm, it, you know, it's going to be rough on us to lose Eric, but we also will work with him very closely in his new role, and we're really excited for him. And in many ways, it, it's I, he's he's making our life a little harder, but he's also making in a different area, making our life a little easier. So, super excited uh, for him and for that opportunity. And um, we'll get out uh, a chart to you. I, I do have. Um, I did also want to mention. If we didn't, if we're done talking about that, if does, if anybody has any questions about the organization, uh, how our departments are structured, now I'd be happy to answer those questions. I did have one other thing I wanted to mention. The, okay, so I'll take that as a no. So mm -hmm. I'll, I'll be brief. Um, so we are. I, I think we've alluded to this in the past. We are ex still expecting to be in in-person meetings if starting in July 1st, the first meeting in July. Uh, we are working right now on how that would happen. How, how do we have, you know, um, provide some social distancing and different aspects for uh, safety, um, but uh, it does appear that that's gonna get sorted out. So just put that in the kind of the, in the background um, and we will follow up with you once we have those, those details uh, flushed out a little bit. We're also very excited as the chair mentioned, um, about bringing forward some amendments to both 135 and 134. Um, and we'll be sharing kind of an overview presentation with you. And then the, at the next meeting and the meeting right after that, we'll have um, the actual amendments before you, for, excuse me, for consideration. So. Great, lots thank of, you. Lots of great things going on. Thank you so much. Um, if so, um, do we have a motion to adjourn? I move. This is Jan. Thank you. Uh, so. Thanks, everybody. Have a good night. Good night. Okay, thank you. Bye-bye.